welcome to Shannon Confidential. I'm Shannon, your host. And our podcast is about a conversation of life, love, and everything in between. And when the insanity and chaos that is going on in this world, the in-between is just off the charts. And that's what we're talking about. It, it's the struggles and, and, and the worry and the stress that we're all under. It does not matter what color you are. It does not matter what age you are. It does not matter what sex you are. It does not matter how much money you make, where you live or where you don't live, your religion. It simply doesn't matter. We are all in this one world. We all have one chance and we can make this right, but we need to work together. And that's the conversation we're going to have today. Now, in a past con uh, podcast, we did random acts of kindness. Now, we were trying to lead by example to show different ways that in this world of chaos, there's still good and there's still good in all of you and you can still do good. If we all did one good act a day, maybe there would just be some change that would start to happen around this world. So I hope you followed our example and maybe you donated clothes or, or you donated your time and the different things we spoke about. But one of the most precious things that we learned during our random act of kindness was the incredible gracious acts of Gloria Vargas. Now, she, she said that we were sent and it was no mistake that we were there that day, but I truly believe that we were sent to meet her, not her to meet us, I, <laughs> it, she's just incredible. So I would like to bring Gloria's story to you so you understand that she can relate in so many different ways to so many different areas of where you are in this world as far as her coming from Barbados she understood and, and, and suffered terribly from domestic violence uh, she's been homeless herself so she knows what she's talking about so she is a true reality of what can happen what could happen and how to pull yourself out of it and what she's doing to show that she cares so I am going to give the floor to Gloria. So Gloria, welcome. Good to see you again, it's Nice Janet. to see you again. Well, my story is so big and so broad and it probably touched just about every person that is watching it, watching and we hope that will watch. I grew up in Barbados by parents of immigrants. My parents moved from St. Lucia to Barbados because Barbados was elevating faster than St. Lucia and my parents, they were even more poor than most. So they went to Barbados. They had to work on a sugar cane plantation. My parents, although they worked on a plantation for the white folks, my parents never complained. They were just grateful to be able to come into another island as an immigrant and work for $6 an hour and provide for, for their family. I never heard them complain about it. I grew up. Like I said, very poor. My mom and dad woke up when I was 16, 17 years old and I almost didn't have anywhere to live. Thank God my boyfriend's parents let me move into their house. But then I came to America in, in, two, in, two, in 1989. My ex-husband brought me to America and we saw, the, we saw this stuff on the TV like America was the greatest place to live. And so everyone took any opportunity to come to America and Oh, wow, I thought I hit the jackpot. I came to America. Then I came to America no sooner to find out that my husband was on, my ex-husband was on drugs, beating up on me, you know, hanging out and cheating and you name it, you know, li living life. Then I, again, almost have any, nowhere to live. I was in, sleeping in a car, you know, because of the domestic abuse. I wanted to not live anymore. But I kept going because I had a son in Barbados that I left in Barbados. I came to America. I came with the dream and hopes that I can make it and help my family. I'm a black person who never even knew that black was an issue until I set foot in America. In, on Bar in Barbados, it's more classism versus racism because the, almost 99% of the population is, is black. Is what black. So we know that the people with the money were mostly white. We didn't care that they were white. We didn't care that they were more privileged. We knew that they had more money than us, and we accepted that. It wasn't an issue of, of, of color. I came to America with great work ethics because where I come from, your money, your education don't distinguish who you are. It's your character, the way you treat people, your moral, your ethics. Absolutely. That's what matters. 
And so I came here and I worked so hard. And my first job in this country was for United Airlines. And I see people that worked for United Airlines for 30 years and they were still at the bottom of the ladder. And they were training people of all ethnicities to be the supervisor, but that black man was not good enough to be the supervisor. And I'm going, I, I don't understand this. Why are you good enough to train someone to be the supervisor, but you're not good enough to be the supervisor? Many positions, they put me to work, but then they only put me to work when the white people were off, they called out sick, the Filipinos, the, the, you name it. They put the black people at the bottom of the barrel, and I, and I couldn't get this. All of my skin started to break out in hives because I felt like if you work hard enough, you should be able to elevate just like everyone else. So I started speaking up about it. I was new to this country, so I didn't think that speaking your mind was going to hurt you. It, United Airlines put in my file a no rehire, yet they never saw a person work as hard as me. All the supervisors said anytime they needed extra help, they came and got me, but yet they put it in my file. As a, then I realized that it was all of this was because of racism. All of my skin broke out in high, but I never, never still don't understand this. And I kept going from job to job to job to job, and I always had to do 120% just to be able to get my foot in the door. And it didn't matter what I do, I still kept being treated worse than anybody else. And I knew it was for my skin color, and I knew it was because I spoke up at any cost. But I was never taught to treat anybody any different. So although people treat me bad, I still continue to do, but I spoke out about it. I came to this country and I came from an island where people unite together. They love one another. They share with one another. Well, if I had it, you had it. And then I came in this country and I see the division and I see everybody fighting to be top down. And I'll step over my brother to get there. And I don't care if you're down as long as I'm up but they don't know that the same way you go up, you must come down. And so although all of these things happen to me, I keep losing my job and losing my job and losing my job for speaking out for racism. I still kept doing what was right and kept treating people as an individual. It didn't matter what color they are, how much money they got. If the president step here right now, I'm gonna treat him just like I'm gonna treat any one of you. Your money, your, your ethnic, None of that mean anything to me. My, my parents taught us to love one another, to share with one another, to look out for one another, to respect the elders. That's what we were taught. If somebody needed it, you had it, they had it. That's what I was taught. Then I start, as I got to these jobs and I, I realized I, I was head server, assistant manager at an IHOP. And this girl, she was on entitlement. And I know the struggle, so I always work 80, 100 hours to stay ahead of the game because I saw how easy it was to be homeless. I saw how easy it was to not be able to pay the bills. Coming from the islands, there was always a safety net. If you lose your job, you got severance pay. So there wasn't that fear that I, I got when I was here. You got severance pay, you got sick pay, you got vacation pay. I come here and I got none of this stuff and I don't understand it. How, how can you treat employees like this? And then people wonder why people are homeless. I mean, the business do bad, the employees do bad. Housing is so overpriced, people just can't make it. You know, and there's so much so much, I, I, can't even, I can't even find the word. It, it, there's so much hate in the world. There's so much lack of compassion in the world. There's so much no love in the world. How did we get here? I don't know, but I know that we can't stay here. I know that the time is of essence that we have got to be able to see one another struggle and help one another with the struggle. We don't have a choice right now. We as people put ourselves in this position with our selfishness and now we have got to get ourselves out of here. Do we need the government to step in? The government have got to come to the center. This is not about Democrats and Republicans and independents. This is about 
United States of America, and not to mention the world. The world is connected to the United States. Everyone has family that come here, that work here, that send money overseas. We got to realize if you got a business and I'm sitting around with no food and nowhere to live, I bring the price of your business down. I stop people from coming into your business. If you got one of these homes right here and then there's a hundred homeless people out here, guess what? Nobody want to come and visit you. Nobody, you value your, so we in this together. You know, we have got to realize that we have to do this together. And so when I see this, and I've tried and tried and tried for 16 years, I saw this coming. And this is why I'm fighting more than ever right now, because we are on a verge of destruction, people. When I tell you destruction, we are on a ship, and it is going down. In less than 100, year, 100 days, this ship is going down unless we get to the center of the ship and bring it back afloat. And that is why I fight. Now I blame a lot of the politicians because I've been fighting this fight for 16 years, trying to get one person to listen. All the media, all the so-called black and white and everybody else that say that they care, especially the blacks, guess what? They don't care. I have tried for too long. I was standing beside President Obama and he could not even speak to me. I went to two politicians in Broward, Alec Hastin and Perry Thurston, asking them to help write legislation that would stop racism on the jobs. Alec Hastin told me to get a better job. Perry Thurston told me he couldn't help you. These are people that are up for election that's saying that they care right now what was going on. But I believe in my heart that more than racism is inequality and classism. And I believe the people fighting on the ground are really fighting not about racism, they're just putting it out the wrong way. I really believe they're fighting because they want a chance. They want opportunities. They want doors open. They want better jobs. They want, um, they want criminal, I mean, reform, reform on your, your police record. These are things that need to be done. And if somebody can just come to the ground and listen to the people on the ground, not the people that is fronting these things, not the media, not not the rich people, the rich black people that all of a sudden jump up and say they care. They have enough money. If all lives matter and black lives matter, put your money where your mouth is and go to these poor communities and do something. Call me a sellout, call me a house nigga, call me whatever you want to call me. But you know what? You, the black elite, is 90% of the, black, the problem. The black po reporters, the black politicians, guess what? You, you should be ashamed of yourself calling out the white folks because guess what? These are your people. And if you don't take care of them, who the hell gonna take care of them? You think I'm gonna go leave, leave my kids and come take care of the homeless? I gotta take care of my kids first. You gotta understand that these are poor people that, that elected you to take care of them. These people on the streets, this all Americans, this all ethnicities out here. You got educated people, you got veterans, you got everybody out here. We saying that black lives matter, but we got all kind of lives out here. Those lives don't matter. I just saw police not too long while I was coming down here telling a white kid that he can't beg for money. Now he can't beg for money to eat, but you got protesters rioting everywhere and guess what? They got the right of it. But somebody is trying to just ask for money to get some food just like these people, they just sit on the side of the road, they don't bother anybody, they're just trying to get a free meal because they don't have money, or they save their little money, you know, to go to a hotel to get a shower, whatever. I mean, this is America, you got people that can't get a shower for four or five days. You got, you got people that got two months and we, we, we call ourselves what? And shame on the Christians. Shame on the followers of Jesus. All over the Bible, he said, to take care of the poor. Now, me and my husband been in the streets for eight years, and I put over 500 meals a week in the streets, and all of it is cooked at my house. When I started this thing, it was pay my bills or feed the homeless. And you know what? I fed the homeless because I can be homeless every day, and I don't want a handout. I never wanted a handout. I believe that entitlement is a trap. I believe that entitlement is a trap and soon as the poor people realize that they're still enslaved, they're not on the plantation, but their mind is enslaved. And their entitlement have set them up for destruction. You will never elevate out of that, 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 that trap. 
as soon as they understand and they listen and when people try to educate them instead of staying in that same mindset that because you're white or because you got money or you this you don't care then guess what i care and i don't got no money and i don't want no money the only money i want is to see these people off the street that when i go home and i get a shower and i say thank you lord for the shower that everybody deserves to go to a shower you can't even use a bathroom properly in your own house. And then people are over here and can't even use a bathroom. But yet you look at them like they're scumbags. Huh? This is America. We can't put portable showers out here. We got all this land and we can't figure something out. And it's not even fair to the owners of these properties. It's not even fair when you invest so much money into a property and then people bring it down. It's not fair. But guess what? You gotta see the poor man's side. The owner of these huge properties need to stop looking to the government and come to the center and speak to the people that wanna bring change. And I'm so grateful for you girls that this, this is an area that most would never come. I have tried and tried and tried and tried and nobody would ever come out here because they see everybody out here as a scumbag. They see everybody out here as an addict. I mean, I had a family out here with five kids and I put them in the mayor of Fort Lauderdale's office and he did nothing. Yes, mayor Tranquilis did nothing for a mom, a grandmother, 67 year old and five kids. I called the media, they did nothing. It was only after the last baby's father got killed that the media called me and they did a story. It took a death and a, and a story that would sell for them to care about this homeless family. I mean, I, I mean, if you, if you, but you know what, guys? I can sit here and I can talk and I can talk and I can talk. But if we don't have the love and compassion in our heart, the only thing that's gonna conquer this is love. It's not money, it's not color, it's not your credential. The only thing that is gonna heal this earth is love. The only thing that's gonna heal this earth is that we stop holding on to every sound bite and stop for a minute. Stop for a minute and don't listen to just the sound bite, but listen to the whole conversation. Listen to where it's coming from. Don't look at because a white man called you black that you think that he hates you. You know what, I'm sitting here because a white Republican just bought me and my family a house. A white Republican, the car I drive. When not one black person will help me, a white Republican is the reason that this charity is still going. Over $275,000 to feed the homeless in Fort Lauderdale when the politicians don't care, when the city don't care, when nobody cares, a white Republican. So you see, Republicans, are, people say that, that they, don't, they, don't, they don't care about the poor. That's not true. Here's the deal. If I had all the money and you don't work, I'm not trying to get pay no taxes to pay for your food stamp, your section aid, your housing, when, when you can work. Now, if you can't work, that's a different story. But when you're able to work, why should I pay more taxes to take care of you? Because what? Because what? No, I'm a poor person that said, get up and go to work. If you come up short, then they need to fill the gap. But you've got to do something. God said, you work six days, you waste one day. This entitlement shit needs to stop. It really do. And the poor people need to realize it does not help them. It does not help them. It stops them from, and you know what? Like I said, I'm a black person, I'm poor. I could call it, I call it like I see it. I call it like I see it, and I'm telling you, I have never taken a penny from the system. Even now with this pandemic, me, my husband, my son wasn't working. Never taken a penny from the system. You know why? God is good. And God always provides for our needs. Our needs, not our wants. So when we have our needs met, we need to go help our brother with their needs. That's what this is about. And this, like I said, everyone can do something. We all gonna have to make a difference. We all gonna have to get out of our comfort zone and realize if we don't move right now, then guess what? You're part of the problem or you're part of the solution. And right now, we need a solution like yesterday. All the politics, everything needs to go to the side because we in this thing together. No color, no ethnicity, no, no money, none of it gonna save us. The only thing gonna save us right now is love, compassion, the world needs more than anything else. And more than anything else, we need to see God show up. The Christians need to stand up and do what they, what they say they're gonna do, what they read about it, what they preach about, they need to put it into action. They need to be leading this front they need to be leading this state, this charge right now. I, I don't understand. I don't understand why we're here. How did we get here? 
How did we get here when we know the word of God? How did we get here? Greed. Huh? Greed. And you know what? God is so good. He said, you come with nothing, you leave with nothing. The money that you have is not for you. It is God's money. It's for you to bless others. And if you bless others, you get to keep your money. But if you don't bless others, when you stand before the Father, oh boy, oh boy. But some people don't believe that we're going to answer for it. But you see, I live with that fear that I know I'm going to answer for it. And that's why I do what I do. He said to love thy brother as thyself. I love thy brother. I come out here, I'm filthy. They hug me, no mask, whatever. You know what I mean? I treat people like I wanted to be, want to be treated. I take homeless people to my house and give them a shower. I take them to the house, they have dinner with us. You know what I mean? I, 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 whatever, whatever that I can do. And I, and I say to people, you know what? People that are homeless are people. They feel they are, yeah, that's they somebody's child. That's somebody's daughter. That's somebody's son. You don't know this struggle. Take five minutes out of your day and come out here with $5 and a plate of food. And just get out of what everybody else tell you and just listen for a minute. Listen, you can stop a child, a person that's been molested. You can stop a mom with domestic abuse. You can stop, there's so many different stories, but they're good people. They're good people, and everybody needs somebody. You know, Lionel Richie said that song, We Are The World? The, the, it's time, it's time for us to realize that we're all part of this world, and this world, it, we can make it or we can destroy it. And right now, we all destroying it. Like I said, you're not part of the problem. And I hope that my story, my story is so big and so broad, and I, like I said, I can speak to every every element of what's going on in their life. And I know that at times I don't understand my struggle. I sit here right now with a son that struggled with, with alcohol. As I, and, and I can understand the addiction either, but God put the addiction right in my house. So you know what? I used to be that people, person that used to say they don't want to stop, they don't. And now, you see, so, so you see, God brings you to places you got to look at why he bring you there. Like these two ladies came out here and I told them it was from God. You know, yes, they don't have the audience yet, but I hope and I'm going to pray to God that they get the audience because this is a conversation that nobody want to have, but it's a conversation that needs to be had because there's millions and millions of people that can relate. There's millions and millions of people that need to understand. They need to understand my culture. They need to understand your culture. They need to understand where you came from. We need to take envy and jealousy out of it because you're rich and I poor or whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make you. It doesn't make you. It's what's in your heart. It's how you treat people. It's not your color. It's not your money. You see the buddy by the wall, the old lady open up the door. You know what I mean? You got $5 and there's a person on the corner, you going home, give it to them. Because it takes more effort to have hate than it takes to just do love. When you drive by the side of the road and you see that homeless person, you gotta pretend you're looking in the mirror. You gotta turn your face, you on the cell phone. You gotta change your mindset and you're telling yourself all these different things why I'm not supposed to give them $5. Give them the $5, you're gonna feel so much better. You're gonna feel so much better for it. You know what I mean? But like God I says, hope, you gotta share. I know, but you know, you I hope that my story, I hope that my story can move someone and can move the politicians. My hope is that somebody see it and I can get a politician here because guess what? This poor black girl right here, I can help you fix this. I don't want nothing. I just want to see love, compassion and equality for all. Everyone deserves an opportunity. You know, I tried and tried and I'm still at the bottom, but that's all right, I can stay at the bottom. My shoulders are big. I stay at the bottom in order to put somebody on my shoulders. Because you know what, if they get up, I'm happy for them. I don't need to get up. I got food on the table. I got a floor to lay on. I got a clean chair and some clothes. I'm good. I grew up where I had one outfit. I grew up where my shoes had holes in it. I had to put a plastic bag in my shoes, but I kept the shoes clean. Nobody knew there was a hole in the bottom. You know what I mean? I grew up where every day was mashed potatoes and butter, spaghetti and butter. I got rats all over the food. I got the rats running in the food. I got the little maggots in the, in the flour. But guess what? We couldn't throw it away. Because if we throw it away, there was nothing else. You know what I mean? My mom always said, eat it because somebody's got less. You know, we, all, we, we were taught to be grateful. We were always taught to be grateful and to always share with one another what we have. And guys, I'm gonna tell you, I came out here and I've been in the streets with the homeless for eight years. And can I tell you, 
I'm not blessing the homeless. It's blessed me and my family. It really blesses me more than it blesses them. So it gave me purpose in life. It gave me perspective in life. It gave me a reason to live, a reason to get up every day. I don't need to go make money. I need to put a smile on somebody's face and give somebody hope. And I hope that my, my story can give somebody what it is that they need to give them a push just to let them know that, you know what, you too can do something because we all can do something. You don't have to do what I do, but you can do something. And the world needs every one of us. God put every one of us here to do, make a difference in the world. So my sister. Oh, yes, Gloria. I know, I know. I now know. do you see why we wanted you to meet this woman? She is incredible. If I'm we not had incredible. more Glorias God is, in God this is, world, God we would is, not me. be where we are. It's not about me. It's all for God and all for his glory. It's not about me. I'm sorry, Lord. I, 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 I made it like it was about me. I take that back real quick. It's not about me. It's all for God, his glory, his purpose. You know, God says, thy kingdom come. Thine will be done as on earth as it is in heaven. He didn't say it might come. He said will come. So you know what? We need to get to work because guess what? We have to bring heaven to earth. We have to live like we're gonna live in heaven. And we, the ones that believe when we go to heaven, do you think that we not, I'm not gonna be blind, you're not gonna be white? We're still gonna be the same people. So we might as well figure this out and figure out how to live with one another. Cause we are going up there. I mean, the believers. We look forward to our return to Gloria to see her next step and how we're going to do this. And we will see you next week.